Jeremy, Jeremy Corbyn is not just the MP for Islington and North, but an extremely, an extremely delicate, passionate and inspiring MP to his constituents and the wider Labour movement. But Jeremy's also at the forefront of campaigning, fighting back and mobilising against war for Palestine internationally. All of those great causes actually. All of those great causes that we hold so dear. And, and I know he's not going to say this about himself, but I'm incredibly pleased that he's standing for Labour leader. And just like Mark said before you, I hope you become affiliated supporters out there, and I hope you vote for him. Jeremy Corbyn. First of all, demonstrations are very important. They are part of our political process. And I say thank you to each and every one of us that's come here today to say it is possible to have a different world. We are giving the message that the austerity we've had for the past five years is not necessary. Hands up anyone here who created the banking crisis in 2008. There's one hand over there. There must be a merchant banker over there somewhere. No, was the banking crisis created by nurses, by teachers, by school, school workers, by street cleaners, by the unemployed, by the disabled, by the homeless? No! Of course it was not. You know it was not. It was created by an unregulated banking system that sucked up billions of pounds of our money in order to survive its system. Survive in this system. Initially the nationalisation of the banks was absolutely good and the right thing to do. There is no case whatsoever for now selling off RBS shares at a loss that somebody can make a greater profit out of our money in the first place. But as soon as the coalition government was elected in 2010, it took an axe to the welfare budget. It took an axe to the local government budget. It took an axe to all the other areas of social spending. It privatised, it cut. As a result, what has happened? One million people in Britain use food banks regularly. And we are the fourth richest country in the world. Is that necessary? Is it right? Of course it's not necessary. And of course it is not right. Inequality has got worse and worse. The 100 richest people in this country now own the equivalent of the wealth of 30% of the entire population. That is ghastly inequality on an industrial scale. And if these next round of cuts goes through, and I'm sure the government intends to put them through, then the situation is going to get worse and worse. I travel around the country a great deal but all these debates and hustings and so on. And everywhere you meet people that are begging on the street, you meet people that are sleeping on the street, you meet young people working zero hours contracts, unable to make ends meet, getting into benefit problems because they don't know what their income's going to be. Is it really morally right or just that anyone should be forced to sleep on the streets of this country at any time? Instead of extolling the virtues of ever-rising prices in the property market, particularly in London, I've got a different idea. One, build council housing for those people in need. Two, regulate the private renting sector. We are spending £11 billion a year on in-work benefits subsidising low wages, we're spending at least £25 billion a year subsidising landlords, charging extortionate rents in some parts of the country. 
we need a different narrative and a different story. So I say this, the people that marched in this square in the 1850s with the People's Charter didn't achieve very much that day. They were dismissed as out of date, out of time and irrelevant. Within 50 years, we had a national insurance system. Within 20 years, we had a universal education system. Within 70 years, we had council housing. Within 100 years, we had a universal health service. Those people were real visionaries. And so when people tell me that the only thing that's practical and matters in politics is being fiscally responsible, paying off the debt, and paying off the debt in record quick time. I say this, the objectives for any society should be eliminating homelessness, eliminating poverty, <laughs> reducing the levels of inequality, investing in productive work and productive jobs. But we are shortchanged when the media tell us all that matters is finding somebody to blame. So, you can come along and say, plague on all your houses, blame every migrant that's come here. No, I stand with those people that have come to this country, worked, contributed, and are part of our society. I want a humanitarian and decent response to those poor people who are victims of war, that are dying in the Mediterranean, trying to reach a place of safety. I am not prepared to join in a campaign of Benefit Street and attacking the so-called benefit scroungers. I want us to stand up as brave people did in the 1920s and 1930s and said we want a state that takes responsibility, a community that takes responsibility for everybody to ensure nobody is destitute. We each care for all, everyone caring for everybody else. I think it's called socialism. And the last point I want to make is this. We've all been in this square many times to oppose wars, to oppose nuclear weapons and oppose so many other things. The world is not an easy place. The levels of injustice are appalling. The levels of greed are almost overwhelming. Are we going to solve any of those problems by spending £100 billion on new nuclear weapons? Or are we going to solve those problems by global reach of our defence capability to start wars everywhere in the world? No. Let's try to rebalance, rethink our society. A world of peace and human rights, social justice for all at home, but above all, remember those that came before us. We stand on their shoulders those people that achieved so much for all of us, for education, for health, for housing. Let's go forward with confidence and, and, confidence and optimism. This anti-austerity movement is a movement. It's not, absolutely not, about individuals and absolutely not about ambitious individuals. This is about a social movement of all of us that can rechange our society into something good rather than something that is cruel and divided. You all know the way forward. Thank you. now you've got some photos tweet them out and we can all share them later on